Um, we're back. We are going to play this round 20 game for sure, one way or another. For whatever reason, I can't seem to get the player camera back, so we're going to see if we can work on that. So, Austin, you had mentioned earlier that uh, you had played, you've definitely played lots of games against Femi, both this year and in the past, and also that you'd played Olatunde before, but you also mentioned that you've actually traveled to Nigeria to play Scrabble twice. Uh, that's something that I, that's on my bucket list to do. What was that experience like for you? Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a very interesting experience. Um, I've never been to Africa before. That that actually still remains my two um, forays into Africa, both to Nigeria. Um, it happened, but back in 2012 and 2013, um, they did have a lot of prize money um, available um, at that time. Also, uh, definitely one of their biggest um, tournaments in the world, really, in terms of that. Um, and Nigel went to both of them, and he didn't win. Um, Pakorn was there also, and Komal and Thatcho, all three of them from Thailand. Uh, three of the best players in the world also were there. Um, and yeah, not all of us, uh, you know, from say outside of uh, um, of of Africa, really did that well. We were kind of like it's a different kind of vibe. It's a you know you're kind of playing in a different different area. Um, it's a bit more difficult. You don't actually know a lot of these players. Also, that a lot of these players also just play. Um, uh, within the within the country, they don't necessarily travel outside of Africa, so that you don't realize technically how uh, how strong the countries are until you actually go and see um, see them in, in play. And um, they're all very quick, they're all very strong, and they know a lot of words, and they've got a great um, tactical um, tactical brain. So that's uh, my ex general experience of um, of the God's Will and Fabio Championships, and I didn't even manage to cash in either of them. <laughs> yeah so it was tough very tough it seems like it's winning one of these tournaments is next to impossible because of so so many strong players that are there as you alluded to so obviously um can't see the player camera i know we're gonna try to figure that out it looks like femi playing fretted i assume as his first play they always like to see that first blank on the rack I don't imagine there's any other letter that could be. And then, of course, Tega in classic fashion, as we've come to appreciate playing what looks like an obviously correct play of Nureen. Doesn't score that many points, 24 points, but that's actually by far the highest score he can get here with his kind of difficult rack of one-pointers and three ends. So, um, all right, let me... Didn't take him long to find that whatsoever. Um, and yeah, just 24 points for a four-timer, which is almost as low as you can possibly get. Um, but I believe it is the right play here, with just the tiles that he has, um, just junky tiles, really, um, keeping an end. And I think that's pretty much it. Okay. Oh, like we've got the cameras back. Got our cameras back. Yeah, sorry about that. No idea why that uh, would happen. WTF says I saw a 104.3 three by a nine timer recently, which is that's pretty amazing. That has to be the lowest possible, or I don't know if mathematically it is. It's the lowest I've heard of. All right, we got our players. We have the right scores, timers. I think we're good. Um, so yeah, we're into the king of the hill part of the tournament things are getting to the nitty gritty for sure um this is there's not very much oh right um sorry i will do that um yes okay um i think we should be up and running for the most part okay so again the schedule here if i can cut to this without crashing the screen fingers crossed you can see that we are into the latter stages of day two, round 20. Tomorrow we will have four more rounds of the main event before the top two finishers make it to the best of five finals. So that's where we're at. Um, every game critically important. The two players that we're watching now, if the tournament ended previously in the last round, it would be these two players in the finals. But can they hold on to their spots? As we see Fib go down, Interesting choice to play Fib there, and man, we're about to see an instant, oh my god, Tega playing absolutely instantaneously. 
I wonder if I have the timers reversed. I think it's possible. Um, I'm going to guess that it is, given that Tega is the one with 40, 40, uh, 24 minutes and 23 seconds. So I'm going to fix that now. Um, all yeah, right. Interesting, interesting play that Femi played uh, Fib uh, next to Nurin and not above or below fretted. Um, does it score a few more points? Um, and, I, and he has the ass as well. So there was no real reason um, to play there unless he was kind of maybe worried about an X bomb uh, next to the E of Urine. So um, interesting choice. And with Anoa, I think that's pretty standard play. I think um, not really seeing much else better than that. Um, so yeah, that's also a good move. Yeah, and again, just so crazy how quickly he's identifying those moves and playing them. So just stand by a moment, and I'm going to fix the timers. Okay, so now we got to give Tega credit for his crazy time management skills. Um, and all right, Gristle. Bingo. The bingo. So this is, a, this is just the way that uh, Femi would want to start this kind of must-win game against a, a clearly very strong opponent in Tega. And he's up by quite a bit here. The score now 175 to 40. Now Tega, if you recall, had a game where, um, I think it was against Edekaro, where he started hugely down early in the game and really battled his way back that very end of the game. Uh, oh, did it challenge? Wow, that's stunning. What is he challenging here? Maybe Nurin. Nurin's. Maybe, Nurin's. Maybe, uh, oh, maybe he's thinking about like how Neuroid. Well, Neuroid does take an S in Collins, <laughs> so that can't yeah. be it. Um, I don't know. Cool. Interesting. I mean, there are some words ending in I and E that don't pluralize, so maybe he's thinking about that. So either way, I think this means Femi is going to get a couple extra points here. Um, and we'll give him those 10 points because this looks clearly like a challenge. Yeah. Um, so, all right, let me just... Um, I want to get this in here before um, take a manage to play any sort of play. Uh, there's, two, there's two floating, um, well, two floaters that would give him a bingo, which are not on the board, but I think Dow to the, um, to the left of Anoa might be the best play here. Um, well, we might see him almost play instantaneously, or mm. maybe he might find something better than that. But there are two letters that will go with the letters that he has that would actually bingo. Which, it is a great feeling when you're waiting for that magic letter, and somehow, even despite your expectations that you're not going to get it, um, those, those letters appear to you, but of course, as you say, Dao seems like... Uh, I mean, you could tack the N on there for six more points, but a slightly less balanced leave. True. I think this is this is probably fine. Tega does need to keep every last bingo tile he can get because he really does need to bingo as soon as he can. So I think playing just Dao makes sense. Um, yeah, it's actually against the wall right now. Hundred over hundred behind, and it's Sammy's turn. He's uh he's got he's gonna need to bingo twice to get him back in the game. So, yeah, we'll see. Oh, it looks like a nice, um, a, a good draw, theoretically, for Tega with that S, but I don't know if he actually is going to hit anything with that. Um, yeah, it looks like a little bit of a close, mm -hmm. close but no cigar type rack that's going to slow him up. Maybe, maybe Femi will put a C out in space and he'll be able to play non acids. I don't see that happening. There's no Femi is probably far too uh, clever to be making new letters to put out in space with such a nice lead that he has. He's going to be trying to drop to block, I should say, however he can. How he chooses to do that, I don't know. Um, yeah. Taker actually almost has anti nodes through the T and the E. Doesn't quite fit. <laughs> oh wow. Very nice. So Austin referring to a possible play that you might make through this T and this E, which is very close. Anti node. Uh all right. So we're gonna see Geeg be played. Okay. Um this looks sensible. 
this doesn't actually open a ton that wasn't already available. Like something starting, whoops, something starting with S right here would be, you know, regrettable, but S bingos are, you know, not that common and the board is already pretty open with stuff elsewhere. Pretty much anything that plays here is likely to play uh, on underneath Gristle anyway, so you're not really costing yourself terribly much, and you're ending up with a much more balanced rack if you're Femi. So this makes a lot of sense to me. Does yeah. this, does this uh, pass in, your test too, Austin? Yeah, Waybin in the chat also uh, said about Siggy playing in that same spot. Um, puts the E in a much more dangerous position, oh. um, but does score a lot more, but does keep the U. Um, but... As it turns out, it looks like Femi might have another bingo. He has Lorike mm. um, in multiple spots. So, yeah, looking like he's in good shape. For sure. I think he's very likely to bingo again next turn, if not an absolute lock to do so, given that the word that Austin just mentioned, Lorike at the very least plays here, in addition to other stuff through these letters. Lorike as well will play up there. So it looks like Nod is the play for Tega, played nearly instantaneously as usual. That looked like as good of a play as he can get there, using one of his two ends, scoring decently. And we're going to see a bingo for Femi here, almost for sure. And this is a big win for him. Tega can definitely sustain a loss here, and he'll still be in pretty good shape. If we just cut to the standing screen, you can see that he is in first place and his spread is very good. So it's important from his POV that he do his best to limit the damage of any loss that he sustained here, um, which I think he's proven to be able to do, except that this is not a very good rack for him to work with here. <laughs> yeah. um, he's, he left a pretty well-balanced leave of A-I-N-S and he, and he drew IOO. We've actually seen Tega draw pretty badly a couple times on stream. So um, clearly a very talented player that, um, you know, when he gets the good stuff, I'm sure he can do good things with it for sure. Um, so yeah, it's like Femi's just wondering what the best bingo is. He's yeah, he has, he definitely has a few, um, you know, places to consider playing. So we'll see where he elects to play. We can just see if... So, okay, I can bring this up while we're thinking about it. So Lorike, the rack Austin mentioned, playing in two spots here. This spot is considerably scarier, putting the E out in space. I don't think you really want to do that here. Also, this positioning scores three more points. And then the only other bingos possible are Loricate through either one of these T's. So I fully expect Loricate to come down here for Femi. Um, this is a, a, a set of seven letters that has actually a bunch of other bingos in it, none of which play because they start with a C. Oh, wow, wow, wow. This is. I can only, yeah, I can only assume that he maybe he doesn't doesn't i mean he had lorike spelled out on his rack but he's playing it with the t um maybe this is slightly more i don't know is it more defensive not being allowed to play a seven through above or below the e and a d um that's the only other thing i could think of no. or maybe that he's just not sure of lorike yes i i think it has to be that he's not sure just because i i don't know if this really has that defensive of an effect on the board yeah i don't think so either you're opening a lot of floating layers as well um, but Tega just plays Chow. I mean, I don't know, maybe playing Adoy or Oidia might be slightly better, opening, uh, forking the board above and below. Um, mm, Chow, I don't think Chow takes an S, so that kind of blocks it up a little bit. Um, but he does definitely need something real soon. So Austin referring to potentially playing something like Oidia here, which the nice, as, as Austin said, forking the board, meaning... By playing through this letter, you've created sort of a, a fork that now there are two lanes where there really weren't any before. So you've you've carved up the board into two chunks, made two little areas to play. So that could have been worth doing for sure. Um, <laughs> Loricate, C, the CBB says that's too defensive even for me, <laughs> AK, or too sacrificial, right? Yeah, because we're just not... 
Um, we're not we're not sold that Loricade actually is more defensive than just playing Loricade for a bunch yeah. more points. So you're sacrificing a lot of points for what might not even be that good defensive properties. But oh my god, yeah. look at Femi's uh, rack now. Vesticas along gig. Exactly. As Austin says, you've got a possible bingo again for Femi, and boy, he is just piling on the points here. So Laura Kate, we gotta give him his points for that, and hit the meager eight points that Tega scored for Chow. Um, we'll give him those points too. So you can see the score is heavily in Femi's favor, and if he sees Vesicas, it's about to get even worse. Um Yeah. So he wasn't sure of Laura Kate. So he may may potentially not be sure of Vesicas. Um, Vesica is good with an E, L, or S hook. Um, who knows? He could pluralize Chow, and that would also be a phony. But, you know, he needs to find the basically the one real uh, bingo play here. So <laughs> giving a kiss to the giving Femi a kiss to the giving crowd. a kiss to the crowd. We love it. Uh, we love it. Well done to Femi. Tega is wondering who he's kissing right now. <laughs> yeah, Tega is just sort of watching. <laughs> impassively like oh god what's about to happen now what can what what more can happen uh is tegas probably thinking but hey he's in first place right now even if femi beats him in this game by a lot he's still in great 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 position to make the finals if he's only able to win a couple games tomorrow so he can uh he can relax these things happen and also he can take solace in the fact that he really hasn't made a misstep in the game it was he just basically like oh wait did he gonna play oh yeah big As miss ascii he's gonna probably play ascii okay um, which is certainly a sizable miss vesicas again yeah. to show you going down in this spot for 91 potential points instead ascii for 29 they, pretty big drop off they can play um, joy and joy comes comes down instantaneously points. yep makes a lot of sense 44 you could play joey if you want to be really aggressive and set your s up in a new position but i do like keeping the e just because as we've said many times when you're trying to bingo keeping one of those e's is really nice so um we shall see what happens here. Again, it's worth something to Tega to try to cut this deficit as much as he can. So if he's able to come up with a bingo, ooh, what's coming oh, here? It's just, it's just a weeks. Picked out, yeah, picked out the W and the K, slowing him down a little. There we bit. go. So we see the rack that he had. Um, this makes some sense here. It's interesting that he plays weeks there when he could play. W E A K if he wanted to parallel to the G here and that would score quite well keeping his S if he wanted to it looks like he's picked his move up and maybe he's considering a play like that um look at Tega's look at Tega's rack yeah. if ever there was a rack that's going to get you back into the game this would be it what can you do with it can you we could be able to hit that Z pretty hard somehow yeah, that's true. Oh, he has the he has um maybe Sez and Bez on Nurins that maybe doesn't need to bingo. Oh, great point. And I bet that's gonna come down nearly. So this is a there really is. <laughs> this is a really defensive play. Vaz leaving E E K for thirty four. That is pure just blocking as much as possible. And yeah. um, instead, we see from this beautiful rack, I'm sure that were there even, it actually doesn't look like there were any bingos available for Tega somehow with that rack. Is that possible? I think he had denizens through that D of fretted. That's what I saw, but it scores almost the same. So you might as well just play says, keep that blank. And, uh, yeah, for yeah, sure. Basically says it's like a bingo, so you might as well. 70 points, it. yeah, 70 yeah. points. So Femi 331, Tega 213, with Tega holding EIN blank. So if Femi continues to sacrifice heaps and heaps of points to play defense, you could see Tega cut this gap quite a bit. A lot is going to depend on, okay, nice play there of key. Yeah. So again, the rack is not 
quite accurate. We do know that he has at least the K and two more E's. Um, so key. Okay, there it is. Okay. Um, Not too bad. So with that rack, key Aaronite. looks pretty reasonable. And Aaronite is about to go down instantly, of course. No surprise. And there, again, there isn't anything any better than a 66-point bingo, which is the play that he's making there. So, yeah, he's still about 90 behind, Yeah. Uh, even after that. So, Femi, even though he missed, Vesica's still well within the driving seat here. And he's got some big tiles that he can play um, parallel to um, Aaronite that will actually block up a bit more of the board. Because um, you can also, there's also a bingo lane above the EE of Gristle and Aeronite that also is above there. So um, if you can jam up the board in the bottom, bottom uh, right corner, that would pretty much seal the fate of um, this game. Oh, look at this. He drew QU too. Ooh. Yeah. So that's point play here. going to, yeah, come down for a lot. Just for the record, all of the S's appear to be used. You can see that if we just, maybe it's easier to see on here. You can see one, two, three, four. So no chance of hooking onto Aaronites here. And also when Femi inevitably, I think, plays something like queer in this spot, there will be no S hooking that either. So, yeah. um, yep. So both Femi, the, um, both yeah, used also. yep, for sure. So no, no chance of any hooking plays here. So yeah, the time management is absolutely bonkers. You can see Tega is at 21 minutes on the clock. This guy needs to play some blitz events at some point because he's going to wreck them at this rate. He probably has some kind of dinner reservation in about 20 minutes. <laughs> real quick. Yep, it's uh, cresting the... Um, the PM, yeah. The 7 p.m. mark. So... Um, yeah, we'll see. Um, if if Tega is out to dinner, he needs to catch that res, then he's doing a great job of manifesting that here. Um, he did not... This is the first I've heard of Tega as a player, and I'm super impressed, <laughs> frankly. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I still owe Conrad a grudge match. Oh, God. Um, yeah, at some point, I'm I'm happy to play and get my butt kicked by anybody, really. So, uh, all right, there's queer. There's as we said, there's really no, um, no worries that this is going to get hooked or anything bad will happen. So, yeah, um, pretty much the perfect play as well. It pretty much blocks almost everything as well. Just to, uh, it, on the off chance that Tega has something, it, it takes everything out almost. It's just the eye of Aaron at the second eye, and then just the bingo lane to the left of Gig, and some kind of weird play through the L of Lorike. That's really it. There's nothing mm. else left. True. Um, but the score is so so far apart now, it's really kind of a blowout at this stage. Yep, Tega plays Dewey in the upper corner of the board here. You can see one, I guess, possibility. He could have played Toyo if he wanted to in the same spot, but this is really splitting hairs. As Austin said, this game is is well decided by this point. So Dewey gets him a solid score, but um, we're going to see that even, yeah, Queer with no threat of hooking or anything scary um, and keeping really good scoring tiles, he's going to continue to just push, push the score up as much as he can um, with his H's, his M, his H and M and B and P, all these nice bingo tiles. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't see uh, scoring left. tiles, not bingo tiles. Yeah. There's no eyes left either. So you can't even hit the triple next to queer. True. Yeah, big move. <laughs> there's nothing else you can ask for. True. Exactly. Hmm. And there goes, Hmm, exactly. What do we think of this play? Hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um seems yeah, seems all right i guess i mean yeah. i think there were ways um to i guess a nice thing is oh, trooping wow look at that okay so that's uh kind of a surprise that tega was somehow able to thread the needle and draw a bingo here nicely done he's going to cut the gap a little bit more this is crazy that yeah. the score now after just an absolute brutal bagging in this game 
is 458 to 393. Tega has somehow found a way to score a bunch of points. And actually, I might add, after that play, there's only there's one tile in the bag. Ooh. So um hold on. What have I done here? Oh, the rack is not updated yet. That's why the M's. So imagine somehow, as we'll we'll see in a minute, um, when Femi's rack updates. Uh what he what he's got but theoretically maybe there was some magical way that he could draw well enough to steal this game i don't i doubt it but um yeah let's see what femi has so you, you said there's one one in the bag is that right yeah um right. i don't know what that is yet oh okay so we have um tega's rack updated but not femi's yeah, so um, this, is, um, this is a reason why hmm, might be um, a, maybe a poor choice because he could have played blimp through that eye and then not allowing Tega to actually pick out seven fresh tiles, which, you know, it probably it, like almost almost 100%, you're not going to get anything, but mm. um, blimp defensively, you're just taking out another lane and getting rid of four of those kind of constants that you don't really want. Um, and that actually would have ended up blocking trooping. That is a really good point with that end game timing, which is so tricky to, to keep in mind. In addition to all the other things that you're paying attention to towards the end of the game, the number of tiles left in the bag is actually a critical factor. All right, there we go. There's the rack for Femi. Um, Femi appears, I think, to be playing the game upside down. Oh, is he about to play? No, he's just counting the tiles. Let's just see what happens when I... Cut to the analysis board. All right, it is upside down. Let me see. I'll just fix yeah. that. So, um, Femi normally plays upside down also, so it's great for you. You don't have to do anything. Oh, yeah. Um, I, well, except not everyone does, so then when we cut <laughs> exactly. to the screen, I have to fix it again. All right, so there we go. The unseen tiles. It looks like an A is in the bag here, which is kind of uh, unfortunate. Uh, for Tega that he wasn't able to pick that. But either way, um, this is certainly no major threat to Femi. He can just come up with whatever play he wants. Something like Blam should be fine. I guess in his shoes, you want to look around and see if there's any place that the X can do any damage to you. In this particular instance, maybe he would be compelled to block this spot here, but I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't think that that's such a big threat. Wouldn't it be nice if there was an eye and something like the like Vitro, vi Vitro was still <laughs> available? That. It's almost there. It's almost, almost there. Very close. Yeah. Take Even that H as well. Maybe. Yeah. True. That's Take that well. H. Take that H and crack it into into pieces so you get three <laughs> eyes instead. Um, yeah. I yeah. mean, there's also Exul as well. E X U L from the. True. EO so you might not necessarily block anything here he might just be um trying to put himself in the best position to go out on the next move mm. true um so the clock disparity is getting funnier and funnier <laughs> at this point as femi's clock whittling down to four minutes with tegas probably not going to go below 20 in this game and frankly has he made Excuse me, has he made a, a mistake that we would really look at? Like Chow versus Oidia? These are like, if that's a mistake, if that's the only mistake you're making using five minutes on your clock in a Scrabble game, you're doing pretty good. You're doing well. Yeah, extremely high level um, play from Tega here. And it also factoring in that he's only barely used like just over four minutes of his time. Um, this is an incredible play. Um, but yeah, he also didn't get very good tiles in this game whatsoever. Um, so it might also be the fact that, you know, he just had easier decisions, so to speak, with all these uh, kind of low low uh, scoring tiles and not really having many options to choose from. Um, but still, he's um, even though he probably got bagged in this game, you could say, and he's only 65 behind, um, that's, a, that's not too bad, actually, bear, yeah. bearing that in mind. And it is, it's definitely worth noting, again, that, you know, the standings do take into account that margin of victory. So for Tega to come away from this game with such a narrow loss is is pretty is pretty remarkable. 
Um, so, oh, hold on, let's see, it's this direction. So um, you can see that margin of victory, he's 13 and six plus 691. He's gonna lose this game, um, but most of the players chasing him in the standings can't remotely compete with that. And, and he's not gonna take that big of a hit to his uh, spread as a result of the game. So that's a that's a win for him, especially as the odds of the spread being used to break the tie and send someone to the finals is pretty high here with so many players log jammed at the top. Having that spread as your tiebreaker is super important. So it's a great job by him to limit the limit the damage here. So yes. let's see. Really? We're gonna he's gonna try to block off one of those X spots here potentially. I think he was about to play that, but then realized that if he puts on that on the other side, he'd actually give a bigger. Oh, uh, he makes it worse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he would make it worse for himself to block up there. As Austin said, though, there's still going to be places for Tega to play his X and cut the deficit even further. So Femi plays Pam for 19 points, and oh yeah, even better, just nice. Ilex in that spot, and it goes down immediately, of course, because he's had plenty of time to think that over, what he wants to do. Um, seen, um, on the scoreboard, um, Emmanuel Umujose just won. So he's now currently, as it stands, in second place. But it mm. will be Femi going back up to number one after that, after this game once it's finished. Yep. So um, Femi has one outplay here. He has a five-letter word, and it looks like he's not going to see it. And that's going to give Tega another shot at getting more points to cut this gap even further. So at this point, this is this is about the best, you know, whatever the score was at the we the worst point of this game for Tega. He's done an incredible job of cutting this gap. Um, he plays through for 24 points. That looks pretty good. I think um, Thurl was slightly better. Thurl was slightly better. Yeah. yeah, very true. Austin pointing out that through is the play, Thurl would have scored five more points. Uh, even though it doesn't use the T, you still come out a little bit ahead on the bargain there. So through is the play um, for Tega there. Again, these are like the most minor possible mistakes. Wonder if um, Femi can V stick him with uh lee or something like that or eel yeah is it worth it um <laughs> it's probably possible but i don't know how much good it does so what was what was your suggestion for the v I mean, stick I, I think the v is the only yeah the v uh with gristle and aeronite there's okay v, uh, so maybe that's, that's the spot. only only so spot put the a, yeah the a next to it or just yeah the it's gonna go it out probably there. yeah it probably works out slightly better to block that v spot and then get the and get a new turn because the nice thing about it is that you have if you play lee or eel you have a nice spot um hold on in the top of the board Wait, hope did I freeze this oh, again? Aka and Adu. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So right here is a good spot for the A to go. So you work out slightly better. Again, not a big deal. So Femi is going to cross the finish line here with his outplay of Odal and Al for eight points. And that's going to put the final score of this game at 514 to 457, Tega somehow managed to get 457 out of this game. Pretty impressive stuff. Um, at one point, the score of this game was two, 297 to 99. A two, roughly a 200-point deficit that Tega trimmed down into the 50-point range. So very, very impressive um wow so um that'll do it for this game in round 20 we can just take a quick moment so you can see as austin alluded to emmanuel umujose won his previous game sahid jimo we've seen him a couple times on stream femi is going to pop back up on top of everybody on the strength of this win he's going to be at 
13 and a half wins. And even when Tega drops, he's still going to be in second place. So given that we're doing King of the Hill, I fully expect to see a rematch of these two players very, very early tomorrow morning uh, at for me and for you, Austin. I think it's a possibility we'll, we'll both be asleep. I'm going <laughs> to do my best to wake up uh, and, and do some coverage of that game. But man, it's getting really tight at the top. And I guess the, you know, the crazy thing is, I'm not sure what to attribute it to. Eighth and ninth place, Wellington Jigure and Etikaro, two players that are rated 2100 in WESPA. Um, but yet, this field is so stacked. Like, when I'm watching Tega play, I'm saying to myself, how is this guy not rated 2100 in WESPA? <laughs> and maybe he will be at some point in the near future. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I think um, from what I can see in the standings, um, the game that we just saw uh, hasn't updated yet, but I think uh, Wellington and Etta might be playing each other. I don't know. They're the only two oh, that yeah. are not added up yet. So um, if that is correct, then one of them will go to 12 and uh, twelve and 8. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering how many wins you may need to get into the top two. This is now kind of the question with four games to go. Maybe 16 wins with a good spread might be enough given the sheer number of people who are all clumped up and the fact that yeah. nobody is really that far ahead of anybody else. You're totally right. So, um, wow. So I think basically, um, we'll, I don't know if we need to wait up for the result of if Wellington did indeed play at a, at a Caro, but, uh, either way, it's going to be more coverage tomorrow. Whether I'm able to bring coverage of rounds 21, 22, whatever, I'm not sure. But we will definitely be covering as much of the event as possible. And for sure, the best of five finals with whoever makes the top group uh, in, those, in that first and second position after round 24. So with that, just want to quickly give a huge thank you to Austin for joining me on the stream. One last plug for him. For anybody watching, Austin has been streaming a lot on his personal channel. I think it would be awesome if as many of you guys gave him a follow. Austin, uh, what is, you know, quick quick thoughts on, you know, how has it been streaming a bit more? It's been really awesome to watch you, but as the streamer yourself, how has that been for you? Yeah, I mean, I just started in February. I'm kind of new to all of this. Um, but yeah, just kind of learning as I go along uh, what to do from, especially from you guys, Will, and um, looking at all these kind of um, streams that you have with in-person tournaments as well, just kind of getting inspiration. Um, and just, yeah, just trying to do more for the Scrabble community and give back to you guys. Um, and, you know, we're just trying to create a bit, create a bit of fun so and bad. trying to grow Scrabble uh, online um, a lot more. So that's what I'm really trying to do. And if you guys are out there, um, if you don't already follow me, then please follow me. And um, we're going to try and uh, I'll try and give you more content as time goes on. And I stream every Tuesday and Thursday. So if that's uh, if you're free at that time, then uh, yeah, come watch. As Scrabbler says, Scrabbler27, scoring and commentary doesn't stop. So we got multiple, multiple fronts of, of relentlessness on the part of Austin. So um, all right. With that, oh, there we go. We got some results coming in. It looks like Wellington yeah. defeated Etikaro in that matchup to sort of preserve his chances. He even has pretty good spread, does Wellington. Yeah, so maybe maybe that win gives him just a little bit of life going into tomorrow where he can win a bunch of games and end up as one of the two finalists. So Yeah, interestingly, also 7th and 8th, both have minus, quite big minus spread. So <laughs> yeah. They won't need to win a lot of games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's Maybe. amazing. Um, so, all right, with that, I think we're going to sign off. We'll go to our standby screen. We'll see who we want to raid, if anybody. But, uh, yeah, thank you, everybody, so much for watching the MGI Grand Slam 2022. And we'll be back with the dramatic conclusion tomorrow as early as I'm able to wake up and start the coverage. So thanks, everybody. See you tomorrow. Thank you.